Good afternoon. I'm Laura Zervis, and I'm a registered dietitian and licensed nutritionist, and I'm happy to present the um, nutritional content for Lending Hearts this month. Uh, if you're local, you know that uh, it's now, or if you're live, I should say, it is June, the end of June, and we know that's a great time for all the summer produce that's available to us. So I always like to talk about whatever's in season around that time to make it most useful for you today. Um, so we're going to cover a lot, and I tried to put together a program that uses a lot of fresh ingredients. I know that's so important for our health, uh, and it's great for um, buying local, for for so many things for keeping our local community busy. And we're going to get started. And no matter where you live, you always want to think about what is in season at that time for you um, to ensure, number one, the peak freshness and that you get the best costs. It's at the peak of its nutritional value. It tastes the best. Um, so when we think of summer, we want to think of uh, this time of year too, we want to think of our melons. And uh, right now we have watermelon, honeydew, cantaloupe. While watermelon starts early um, June in most areas, goes all the way through the end of summer. And you'll even find some in the fall. And with honeydew, you know, sometimes the best honeydew comes in September. It's good in the, it's good in the summertime, but it could be fantastic in September. So I'm gonna tell you about how to pick some of these um, fruits for your home, for your family and how to prepare them. And we have a couple of nice recipes using the watermelon, using honeydew, uh, cauliflower, mushrooms, uh, all kinds of good stuff today. So let's get started. Again, all these recipes are on my white website. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to help you um, if you have any um, issues with anything or you wanna make any substitutions, that'd be great. Just uh, reach out and we'll go from there. So first we're going to talk about how to pick out um, our fruit. And if you ever have gone to the market, you see many people uh, doing all kinds of experiments on their fruit before they buy it. Everybody has their own uh, tested and tried ways to do that. I have my own two. Some of them I, I heard, um, and I'll, I'll tell you about those sources where, I, where I've got them, but um, the main one today for the watermelon was actually talking to the produce manager several years ago at our local um, grocery chain and and I've read this as well so for watermelon you want to pick the heaviest watermelon you could find um, dark green color and what we're going to do is I'm going to hoist it up we're looking for this yellow spot which means that it had time to sit on the ground right where it was and ripe it wasn't picked too early and that's and that's why we always want to buy local correct because the sooner something's picked, then it um, sometimes it's picked too soon before it's ripe, and then it spends a lot of time traveling to get to us. So um, you want to make sure that you are trying to buy local and doing those things. So anyhow, let's look at this watermelon. I'll tell you, we're going to put it aside. We'll talk about some other fruits, and then I will also will look at the, the watermelon once we cut it because there's some other ways to tell as well. I've seen people um, push in the ends to see if there's any give where the stem was. I've seen people smell them. I've seen people knock on them, um, but I do know that finding that nice yellow low spot on the bottom and buying a very heavy one should be um, should ensure that you're getting a nice sweet melon. So let's put that aside before we um, start working on that. And the next thing we're going to look at is cantaloupe. So here is my cantaloupe right here. And this is what I like to look for. There is a netting on, it's almost like a netting on cantaloupe. So it's almost like a little basket weave on actual, on actual top of the rind. So what I like to look for is cream on cream. So if you see that it's cream underneath and cream on top, that's usually a good indicator uh, that it's going to be uh, ripe. If you find, you see on the is then we have a little bit of green here. If it's very dark green under this netting, under this weaving, that's usually going to need a little bit more time to ripen. So it might've been picked too soon and you'll know too. Um, sometimes if you could see that large, um, the very dark green under the weaving, it's going to have a very thick rind and the fruit is going to be a little bit tough and probably not sweet. So we'll cut into this one and see what it looks like inside. And the last 
fruit that we have here today um, that we're going to talk about picking for ripeness is honeydew. So honeydew, like I said, it's fabulous in September. September, usually you can't get a bad honeydew. Um, right now, you just have to be very careful because again, sometimes they're picked too soon. Sometimes they're traveling really far. So uh, what I like to look for, and like I said, this is usually more pronounced in September, but you'll still see it now. I like to look for some brown lines on here um, and you'll see them more pronounced. It's almost like, um, it feels almost like the weaving that's on the cantaloupe. You'll see like some brown lines here and there, and you'll see like there's a little bit, a little bit of indentations. You could see it right here coming up, okay, versus it being totally smooth and hard. So I have a feeling this is going to be a good one. So uh, let's cut our cantaloupe. We're not going to be using that one, but let's cut into it and just see what it looks like and talk about cutting fruit. Um, I. Um, I spent many hours um, cutting fruit in my day in culinary school and at, at certain jobs that I've held and, um, you know, picked up pace, look, learn from some of the best on how to cut quickly, how to cut, how to cut. So we're not only quickly because quickly doesn't matter necessarily at home, right? When you're working in a restaurant or a kitchen or you're working for a caterer, it's, it's all about speed. But when you're, when you're at home, it's about waste. And everything, especially today, with the price of our of everything, of all the groceries, especially produce, we don't want to have too much waste. So the best thing, I'll show you how to do that. And the other concern is safety. We always want to make sure that we're very safe when we're cutting our fruits. So let's get our cutting board. I'll move my watermelon aside, and we will cut the, um, the cantaloupe and see if we did in fact pick a good one. Just going to adjust the camera down so you can see how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to grab my French knife. It's called, this is an eight inch French knife. It could also be called a chef's knife, whatever you want to call it. This is the, uh, my knife of choice for this. I don't recommend, I, I've seen people cut them like, you know, hold them in their hand and do this kind of cut. That, that could be really dangerous. You know, you, you know, Ever want to cut towards yourself. The biggest thing when cutting all of our fruits and vegetables is create, look how much this is going to move around. If I'm going to try to cut it here, it's going to move so much. So the first thing you want to do is make a flat edge. And this was that end that we said had the green. So you can see how much green is around that, um, is around the rind and a lot less around this one. You can see how there's hardly any there. So let's discard this. So we've made our flat edge. So we set our um, cantaloupe down. It's not going anywhere on us. We just take our knife and let it guide us. So your first one, sometimes you could see, I'm not wasting it uh, too much at all here. So the first one tells us where we're going to cut. So we're just gonna follow that green line all the way down. And we're just gonna go like this. and just keep following the edge. And if I always find that if you like, I don't know if you could see, but there's like a real light green there that I missed, always better to go back and get it versus taking too much off. Okay, and just, I like to put um, the cut part behind my knife and um, look at the part, uh, keep the part in front of me that's green that I want to cut off. Two, but uh, probably be a little riper. There were ones that were had much more pronounced cream. They were so small and um, they were priced each. Uh, so it wasn't a per pound price, it was, per, it was per cantaloupe. So of course, if you're buying it per cantaloupe, you wanna get the biggest one that you could find, right? The biggest and the healthiest. After we get it to this point, after we move the whole rind, we've got everything off, look and see if you have any green spots. rid of that. Um, it's nice and flat. It's not going anywhere. Make another flat surface. This looks good. You could see by the way the seeds are that this is really nice. And I'm just going to scoop out the seeds here. And it sounds very juicy. And you could use, I mean, I'm using a scooper. You could use a, just a, a spoon is fine. 
whatever you have. Make sure you get all of those out of there. And then what I like to do, it depends what I'm using it for. Um, if I'm using it for a fruit platter, I like to, you can see it's a little bit hard. If it's a fruit platter, let's get it here. It's not, of course it's not cooperating. There we go. And this is just one way. I like to ensure that, you know, if I'm gonna do all, you know, quarter inch or 16 inch pieces. And then when I'm making my fruit plate, sometimes I do like I'll fan it or, you know, maybe push a section up and then put my berries in there. Um, so that's it. Or, you know, if you wanna serve it on a plate, it makes a nice presentation. You could fan it down. There's so many ways to present this, which are, you know, which are really cute. So let's just set this aside and we'll um, talk about another way to cut it. The other way, you know, you, if you're cutting chunks, you know, maybe you wanna do like one inch cubes. So just to keep it all the same, because that's important. If you wanna do something where you're wrapping around the fruit, that might be a good idea. And again, we'll go over that one more time just about the, you know, the other way. And if you don't want it this big, you still see it's just a little bit hard, not super juicy, even though those seeds are good. Then you could also slice it in half this way, however you want to do it. All right, so we'll just set that aside. And next we'll do our watermelon. So let's talk about the watermelon. And before we did anything today, um, I did wash these, remember, that if you don't wash your fruit, you could always be introducing some bacteria that was, think about all the people that have handled this, you could be introducing bacteria from the inside, uh, from the outside to the inside of the fruit. So, um, and the, we're gonna make two flat edges on this. You could go like that if it's giving you a hard time. And I will scoop this out. Sometimes I just give it a nice little whack to get it started. Oh, and we can see this is a good one. Uh, I'll show you here. We have just a small amount of the rind. Um, it's not too thick. Sometimes if, if we have our white part that's just too big like that, uh, you know, it might not be as good inside. And I'm gonna show you one more thing too. When we, another um, way to look at, to pick the fruit if it's already been cut. Sometimes our grocer um, in the winter time might serve this in quarters. So let's talk about how to pick that too later on as soon as we get into this. Uh, a watermelon, by the way, while we're, while we're cutting our watermelon, let's talk about it a little bit. I'm gonna put the camera there so you can see it. So watermelon is wonderful. I have so many clients that are like, oh, Laura, I don't eat watermelon because it's so high in sugar. And while there is some sugar, it's already built into the carbohydrate content of this. So whether we're talking about, um, see how we just follow that rind all the way down, not wasting any at all. So there, um, let's talk about it. One cup is about 46 calories, um, you know, probably about 10 to 12 grams of carb. A serving size for this would probably be a little over a cup because remember a serving of fruit is 60, calories, 15 grams of carbohydrate, zero grams of protein, zero grams of fat. And that would be, so if you think about it, that would be a half a banana, a small apple, a small orange, uh, one and a quarter cups of watermelon, a heaping cup of berries. All of those have the same profile, about 60 grams of, um, of uh, 60 calories, 15 grams of carb, no protein and no fat. But anyhow, uh, I always tell my clients that, you know, the sugar that's found in these things is part of your total, total carbohydrate co content. It's figured into there already. Um, we're getting so much from watermelon. It'd be a shame to omit it. Uh, there are phyto compounds in it. I'm sure you've all heard of lycopene. Um, lycopene is really good for, for, um, helping with muscle weakness. It's also good with lowering blood pressure. It's good for prostate health. 
Um, so a lot of things that we talk about with lycopene, other sources of lycopene, um, you know, tomato products, obviously, um, you know, but watermelon is a great source. The other compound is called citrulline, and that is in the rind, the white part of here, which we don't eat too much. Um, we're probably still getting some, but not, not as much as it's, it's mostly concentrated in the rind. So again, just keep going through here. If you miss anything, just pick it up. If you're not comfortable using a French knife, you could use a smaller knife, but I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's probably the best tool for this, especially when you're talking about cutting through the vine. And again, any little white spots that we miss, we'll just get right now. Just go around, turn our watermelon around. There we go. So there we go. Now we're, we have this beautiful, let's get, we have a little bit here. Let's go, okay. So now we have this um, great shape here, right? So we could do anything with this, almost like a football. Um, so we're gonna cut it in half. I like to always, again, always, always, always ha um, have a flat edge. That way it doesn't roll and get away from you. Okay. This is what I'm talking about when I'm, when I'm mentioning about how do you pick one in the store if it's already cut. So I'm gonna demonstrate on this one. If it's already cut right here, if you notice that sometimes you'll see a split um, and, it, and it's starting to split right here and it gets a nice little, in fact, if we cut it again, we'll see that split. Um, and then you'll see this white part right here. And that just is like the sweetest part of the melon. It's heavily concentrated right there. So this would be, I'm sure this is gonna be a great watermelon. So same thing like our cantaloupe, cut it into a different, um, as many different shapes as we want. And our first recipe that we're gonna make is a watermelon and feta salad with mint. So this calls for, a, um, you know, a small watermelon. So we'll just, um, you could do it however you want. I, I like to, um, I'll show you a couple different ways because I like to get a nice uniform um, piece. And let me get my bowl here. I like to get a nice uniform um, piece of watermelon. If I, if I have a salad, right? If, if I have everything in here, I want everything the same size. There you go. So you can see how all my sizes are the same. Okay, and we know that's really important when we're cooking because things are going to uh, take longer to cook if they are large, like meat on a skewer. Um, again, one inch cubes. It's the easiest way right there. Perfect. And it makes your salad look better too. You know, versus having all these different sizes. And when you get down to the last one, do the best you can. That still looks pretty nice. And let's get this other quarter here. Oh, and we'll talk like, so um, I'm going to cut a couple more uh, things of the, a couple more slices of cubes. And then we'll do that last, um, that last half will do some different shapes again. Looks really good. It smells delicious. And I see I have a little piece of white there, get rid of. Beautiful. Okay, so just looking at our bowl of watermelon, I always love to use a beautiful colored bowl just to contrast with this beautiful fruit. That looks perfect. You see how all the pieces are uniform? That's exactly what we're going for. All right, so now we're going to make our dressing um, and then we will put it over here. Let me just grab a nice little bowl. And we have all of our 
ingredients right here. Let me just move our. So we have in our, um, we have in our feta salad, we're going to put a quarter cup of olive oil. We're gonna mix this all together. And I have all this measured before. So a quarter cup of olive oil and three limes juiced. And I got some great limes today. Three limes and just going to mix that together. Whisk it real lightly. And while we're doing that, we're going to add our other, um, our other ingredients to the, into our salad. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, feta cheese. And this is sheep's milk feta. And I highly recommend, even if you're not making this salad, um, just trying the pairing of watermelon with feta cheese. It, it's great. The salt content of the feta intensifies the watermelon, the watermelon. I mean, it's just, it's just, you have to try it. So I highly recommend it. You could just do little crumbles. I've just crumbled it up and you could add as much or little as you'd like. I, I have um, about three quarter cup there. Uh, we're also going to add some cucumber and I use the small cucumber just because I wanted to keep it the same size as our watermelon. And also a quarter cup of red onion. So you can see how this is really coming together nicely. A little bit of kosher salt. Now this salad, you wouldn't want to make it um, uh, you wouldn't want to make it earlier if you're going to a picnic or something. You wouldn't want to make it in the morning and then take and refrigerate it and take it later on in the day. It's best served. In fact, you might even want to leave it just like this and pour the dressing if, if you're having a dinner party or you're entertaining. You might want to leave it like this and then right before your guests sit down, put the dressing on it because it does uh, with the watermelon, with the lime juice and the oil, it's going to break down quickly. So it's best eaten uh, right after it's served. So you want to make sure that you're not having, um, that you're not preparing it too far in advance and that you're not making too much. So um, my recipe today actually called for a larger wet watermelon, but I just wanted to cut it down a little bit just to make sure that none would go to waste. Okay, so what we're going to do is we'll dress this. I'll just pour some on. And we're gonna give that a stir. And then I'll show you what we're doing here. And then the last thing we're gonna do is add mint. And um, you could either cut it, you could leave it whole. You might wanna just break it um, versus cutting it. And you see how nice we're doing it here. Some of these smaller leaves, you could even leave, um, you could let just stay whole. Only because if mint is so delicate, it's in that same same family as basil, make sure you're not getting any stems. It's in that same family as same family as basil. It doesn't like to be cold. It doesn't like to be wet. Um, it, it'll bruise easily. You know, sometimes we'll put it in um, cocktails or things like that where we're bruising it to get out the oils. Now you'll, you'll get it. It's, it's just nice little tender leaves. It's okay to eat them the way they are. I, I don't recommend, um, even though we have some lime juice in here, you wouldn't want to, um, it, they will oxidize and turn brown. So, oh, it smells so good. We re I really did bring out that the mint oil in here. So we'll just give that a little stir, just a gentle stir. It looks so perfect when we had all the mint on top. I really don't wanna mess it up. So we'll just let it go right here and I'll add a few more pieces of mint. I can't even tell you how much, how good this smells between the mint, the feta, the melon, uh, the red onion, everything, and even, I hope you like this. I know you will. Um, again, so much fun. So, um, you know, your guests are going to be amazed how these, these tastes come together. So let's set this aside and we're going to do one other watermelon dish that I thought you would like. So let me just move this and our prep. And the salt, I did not give you an amount for that. You could use it 
I usually just say to, to taste in case anybody's watching um, that has concerns that they're sodium sensitive, I'm getting out. Of you know, if you're sodium sensitive, um, you know, the general recommendation for um, sodium is 2300 milligrams a day. You know, so you wouldn't want to, um, you want one, I wouldn't want to put too much salt on the salad. I would rather use salt that if you're in my home, I would rather use salt it at your plate just in case, you know, you might not even need it. Let me just move the dressing so it's not in our way. Okay, the next thing I made was a lot of fun and I did, had to do it beforehand because um, it had to go in the freezer for a few hours. So let me tell you about it. Uh, the next thing is called watermelon ice. And I think it's a nice refreshing uh, dessert that you could serve to your family or friends or dinner guests in lieu of ice cream or something heavier, right? In the summertime, we're, you know, we're wearing shorts, we're wearing our summer clothes. We don't want to be bogged down with ice cream and these heavy things. This is a great light um, snack and, and it's so refreshing after a meal. Um, so let's talk about what's in it. It's really great. It's tasty. So what I did was, um, and I'll, I'll show you, uh, I don't have my gelatin. So if you're familiar with the Knox gelatin, it's a teaspoon of the Knox gelatin dissolved in two teaspoons of water. So we just do it that, that just aids in making the gel process. Um, after that, we um, have a little bit of lime juice and some honey and um, probably a tablespoon of fresh lime juice, a tablespoon of honey. And this particular recipe was two cups of watermelon. So we put all of that in the blender. First, we just put the honey, the lime juice and our gelatin that's already been dissolved. That's important, it has to be dissolved. And then we add our watermelon, just you know, maybe a half cup to one cup at a time and pulse it gently till it's thoroughly blended. And and then from there, you're going to set it in the freezer. Um, ours was in the freezer probably four hours. So hopefully we'll get a nice little um, something out of it to show you. So let's go ahead and I will show you. And then the other key to this also is putting it in a shallow bowl. So uh, we don't want to, if we do make a large batch of this, we want to make sure that it's not so large that, um, that, it, that it's so deep and it has to be in the freezer for a very long time. So what we're going to do is you could take uh, we're going to try our scoop. You could also try a spoon and we're just going to, this is called watermelon ice. So you see how it's just curling around down here. We're just going to shave it off and let's see if I have any of our mint left. Let me see if I still have some mint from our other from our watermelon salad. So we'll just take a little, why don't we just take this whole little sprig here at the end and just go like that. Doesn't that look nice? So we have our watermelon ice, so easy to make, so refreshing. Um, but to, it, it'll finish any meal and not feel like it's too much, you know, something nice and light. And if you wanted it to be uh, vegan, you could always use agave instead of using the honey. So let's just set this aside. And we'll start with our next item. Tried to get a lot of items today so you have, um, so you can make really good use of the of the produce that's available to you in the summertime. So um, that's why I'm, I'm always looking for things that, you know, you could something that you could do right then, something that I hope you're excited to go to the store and try some of these things or your farmer's market. Um, I'm lucky enough where we are, where I live, that there's a farmer's market most nights of the week in the summertime. So whatever I don't have in my garden, and while I have grown watermelon in my garden, I have some growing now, it's not gonna be ready probably until the end of August, uh, maybe even September. So the next thing that we're going to make is we have our watermelon salad and then we have our dessert and this is an appetizer. So it didn't go in order today, but it's because of um, how long everything takes. I try to time them so we could uh, keep things moving. We're gonna do our honeydew. So let's, um, it's gonna be honeydew wrapped in, wrapped in prosciutto and a nice little balsamic glaze. Let me give my glaze a little, 
turn it's been on the um, oven while we talk. And if you remember from some of our previous classes, um, balsamic glaze is uh, balsamic vinegar. And sometimes, you know, there's some people that like to add sugar to it, um, brown sugar to get that re to reduce quicker. And that will help it reduce quicker. But I find that it's best to, um, instead of adding sugar, because there is a little bit um, in that balsamic vinegar, to use a more shallow saucepan or, you know, you only use a small amount. If, if you only have a small saucepan, then just maybe like, um, you know, a half inch or a quarter inch at the bottom of a pan. If you have a cup of it, it's going to take a really, really long time. It needs that even distribution of heat, and it takes a while for that to reduce. But by using a more shallow pan, if you if you have to do like a cup of it, you're better off using a eight inch skillet that it's going to just put a very thin layer on the bottom and it'll come up much quicker for you than it ever will in like a two quart saucepan. <laughs> so just something to remember. So let's do our honeydew. And again, let's see, let's get our flat edge, show you what I'm doing here. And so there we go. Now, and this is really nice. It doesn't have a thick rind, just has a nice thin rind there. So we'll just let that be our guide, what we're going to cut. And again, go back and get anything you might have missed. If you think there's a little too much white on there, that looks pretty good. Look at all, all sides. Again, we have this, um, you know, almost looks like a, a football. And we'll cut it in half. And when this, this, this is a good sign here. When we see all of that white, next to where the seeds are that is usually and you see how our how this is nice and um firm here too you have to be very careful sometimes people leave these out too long on the counter before they use them and you open this up and this will be sopping wet inside um you have to be very careful there can be contamination in these um you hear it all the time with candela or with honeydew especially so you just want to make sure that uh it's still it still um could go bad you have to be careful keep it refrigerated until you're ready to use it Um, they're, they're coming out real nice. Yeah, a little juice is okay, but if you open it up and it's just full of juice and the seeds are, you know, the seeds are just laying in there versus still being attached, um, it might be over ripened and not, not really that good for you. Okay, and just scoop all our seeds out. Now, with this one, what we want to do is we're um, we're going to use half of our honey. Do and we're going to cut it into one inch cubes, and then we're going to let's get our prosciutto here, and we have some basil, and I like the prosciutto that I chose for us today is um, no nitrates, no nitrates involved here. So let me get another knife. Um, so always important to go with no nitrates and no nitrites. And we're just gonna do one inch cubes. So I'm probably going to just cut one inch slices. There we go. All right, and then we'll just from here, something like this. And you know, when you're doing these things, it's good to, to you know, also be making a, you know, you might wanna have some fruit salad on the side that you could always put these scraps in. Um, and this is when we're talking about the, the feta with the, um, with the watermelon, all those taste combinations, the lime juice, all those taste combinations going on you know, um, this is another great one. So you have the pull and the sweetness of the um, honeydew and all those that the flavors that that evokes and you're pairing it with the 
um, you're pairing it with the prosciutto, the saltiness of the prosciutto. It's just, it's, it's just a, a wonderful marriage, so to speak. So you might wanna just take, we're gonna use a half slice of um, prosciutto for each piece. So what I'm just gonna do is, and I'm gonna trim, no, actually I'm not, because it's going to um, have our prosciutto um, tear. So we're not gonna do that. And we're just gonna take off, get a thin slice looks delicious and that's what you want to a nice thin slice and we're just going to wrap this up and then we're going to take a basil leaf and it just so happens i've picked these this morning and they are huge so i'm just going to try to use half of it and we're just going to set them on our dish like so And let's see, we'll just make a couple just to get an idea here. Just roll it right up. And you could, you don't know, we could just even, we don't have to have the, the, um, the basil on there perfectly, just as long as, as you get it. And you could definitely skewer these. Um, I'm always hesitant to, um, you know, I usually, I prefer to put out like a little fork or something so people can pick them up versus having them in a toothpick, only just so somebody doesn't accidentally jab themselves with the toothpick. So we're just going to do that. A little slice. And you know, your basil may be a different size than mine. And you could just put one on top. You could sneak one underneath. There's so many uh, things you could do. And you could even, you know, however you want to do it. And maybe you don't want basil. You could always try, um, you could put mint on this one as well, too. Uh, again, they're in the same family. They're both, could be a little persnickety. They don't like the cold. They don't like wet. They don't like to be overhandled. They don't like to be bruised. Um, they just like to be gently handled. So we have our balsamic glaze, which is very thick because it's been on all morning. So let's just, and you see how that it, um, it caramelizes. So this is actually very beautiful. So my glaze is actually kind of shriggy right now, but it is making for a nice presentation. So we'll just keep up with this. Beautiful, that's gonna be delicious. And you could always, I could always heat this up and make it um, a little bit more runny again. And, and, you know, and just put like a little, um, put a little, uh, a little serving dish in the middle. We can just leave these go. That's gonna be really good. Okay, let's set this aside and we will work on our next recipe. Get um, a little dish here. Okay, and I just rinse off our, well, I think I have a whole new cutting board for our next item. Okay, so our next item, and I hope you like this. I, I think this is um, really good and there's a lot of variations on this. And it is the cauliflower steak. So, um, you know, sometimes in, in some of our other classes, we roasted cauliflower. And what we did was we cored it and we pulled it apart so delicately so we wouldn't get all the crumbs. Um, so this is a little bit different. So this is kind of, even for me, uh, sometimes I see all the cauliflower going. I'm like, oh, I'll just have it with some dip later, um, you know, set it aside for myself because I just don't like to waste. But anyhow, so what we're gonna do for this is we just remove the outer leaves of the cauliflower. And this recipe is really nice. I'll tell you about it in one second here. Let me just adjust my screen. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our cauliflower and I left the core on. We just removed the outer leaves. So it each, it's like a steak and it just kind of fell apart in my hand right there. Actually, this is still there. So it's just like a steak, just like that. 
Uh, you could broil this in the oven. I have a few sheet pan recipes that I like to use, um, but today we're going to grill it. So of course I had to grill it ahead of time. But what we're going to do is we take two cloves and with two tablespoons of olive oil, I did is that honey is just a little bit viscous. I usually, um, you know, something, I usually just do the olive oil and the kosher salt, but this one was a little bit, I thought it might be nice since we're grilling it to add a little bit of honey to it, just so we have a little bit more of a coating on it. Um, so anyhow, what we do is we take the olive oil, the honey, and um, the garlic, and we brush it on the cauliflower really well, so it's nice and well coated. And then we just grill it. And I like to, um, what I like to do is get one of these grill, these flat um, grill baskets. And I'll put this down so you can see it here. And what I do is I I put it on like this, and then I close it, and then you know I put it on the grill. Grill. And sometimes what I do, since it does get so messy, sometimes I do this when I'm outside. Um, you could also take your whole mixture with you and, and paint it on. You could dunk it, however you want to do, but it does, you are going to need to put something on it to get it to your grill area. So let's see what that looks like. Let's just put this aside. And that gets grilled for probably uh, three to four minutes on each side. And this is what we have. Isn't that gorgeous? So just lightly browned. And some of these did stay into nice steaks for me. I've had it sitting in here. Let me just use, uh, just try to keep them in one piece and we'll get our spatula and just delicately put them on our, our tray and then we'll garnish them. So like I said, only two to three minutes on each side. You wanna set your grill on high. Um, you might want to, I don't know if you have to, but you could wipe down your, um, grill with a little bit of um, canola oil. And they do make some sprays, um, like the spray that we use in the in, inside the house for like sheet pans and stuff. They also make one that uh, you could put on your grill for high heat. Uh, I like to use that too. So we'll just put them on there. And this is great. In cauliflower, you see it a lot. Um, it works out really well as one of those um, meatless mains. And the reason why is cauliflower is so high in fiber. So um, it really stands up, right? So that's why they use the, that's why we use the cauliflower for the steaks. It really stands up to the heat. Um, you, don't, you don't need to cook it super long. You don't need to overcook it or it'll get mushy. Um, but it, if you just cook it enough so it's al dente, firm to the bite, that's when it's going to be most enjoyable. We've got some great grill marks on here. We have the honey, just a teaspoon, just a tablespoon that was in the whole marinade. Um, so that just brings out, that just intensifies the flavor. Um, so anyhow, you could eat this on focaccia. You know, if you're making like a grilled vegetable sandwich, you could just put it on your plate and eat it that way. And then just think of all the things that you like to put on your steak. Um, it doesn't have to be a Bernays. Um, it could be something simple like the chimichurri that we made in our last class on the eggplant. That would be fantastic on here. Um, um, since there is red pepper flakes, um, I like to just probably put a couple more on just to add to that little bit of a bite. Okay, let's get this. So let me move the camera here so you can see. So just whenever that comes off the grill, we'll just sprinkle with some red pepper flakes and a little bit of parsley. Okay, just like that. We have our prosciutto and we have our cauliflower steaks. Let me set this aside and we'll talk about our last item for the day. And so much to talk about with this last item. Um, let me get my prep. Okay, our last item that we have today is a grilled um, mushroom on a skewer. And, and mushrooms and cauliflower are really great uh, if you're trying to have a few um, meatless main dishes because they, like I said, the, the cauliflower has the fiber content. Mushrooms have that 
uh, that meaty, almost even smoky flavor that give that umami taste, um, that fifth sense of, um, that fifth taste sensation that we have that's found in some meats and MSG, things like that. Um, mushrooms have that as well. So mushrooms really, you know, it, it really does something to the senses when you have them. So uh, this is a really nice recipe. It's so easy. Uh, what we do is you take, I took white mushrooms. You could use uh, baby bellas. You could use I don't see why you couldn't use portobellas. You could use a whole portobello mushroom too. You just wouldn't, um, you wouldn't skewer them. You, I would, you could um, slice them and skewer them or you could just put them on whole. But the important thing is that you need your mushrooms to be at least a half inch thick. Otherwise they're not gonna stay on the skewer for you. Um, Cause these are nice little skewers. And this is really nice. It's a nice thing for your um, guests as well. I'm always thinking about things that are easy to eat when you're entertaining, things that aren't going to be messy, things that people could just, you know, mingle with their friends and still have something. So um, I like to find those type of recipes. So anyhow, what is in this recipe is we have olive oil, um, two tablespoons of reduced sodium soy sauce. I have garlic in here and some salt. And I don't think I have lime juice in this one. I had lime juice. No, just, and we, there is some balsamic. There's balsamic along with the soy sauce and um, the olive oil. And you're going to cut your mushrooms. I'm gonna show you what this looks like. You're going to cut your mushrooms into these one half inch slice slices. And then we're going to marinate them in that mixture for a good, oh, 20 to 30 minutes should do it. I, I don't think there's any reason to do it any longer than that, but 20 to 30 minutes. You do wanna make sure that some of the, um, that the, the mushrooms, that some of the spices stick to the mushrooms. And these, I, I actually grilled some, these ones are some of the, the misfits that just didn't get on as well. So you could either, what I would probably do is after class today is I will probably put these in my grill basket and, um, and prepare them that way. And they are so good. Or I could just put them on the skewers the way they are here. Um, again, mushrooms, really great. They have that umami taste. Uh, we have salty, sweet, um, sour, and bitter, and umami. And that is that fifth taste. Now they're saying there's some more. But... Um, mushrooms are great. And that's why mushrooms are also wonderful as a meatless main dish. Um, and you could pair this, this could be an appetizer at your party. This could be, um, and, and the other thing too, you could also do this on a wooden skewer. I just, I usually don't use wooden skewers. If you're going to do that, you would wanna soak it for 30 minutes first. Um, you always wanna soak the wood so they don't burn. And that 30 minutes soaking in water should be enough that they will allow your food to cook, but they won't burn themselves. Um, so I was saying you could use this as a, um, an appetizer, you know, cause if you could just imagine if you do have these on a small four inch um, skewer, you know, at your party, that would be, that would be nice. And let's see, let me get just a dish to set these on behind me here. And the other thing you could do is if, especially if you're using the whole uh, portobello mushrooms is that you could, you know, this could be a, a main dish with a side of um, quinoa, couscous or brown rice. It just adds um, another, today, I mean, it, it's been a really, uh, you please look over the recipes when you get a chance because they're all just wonderful taste combinations. So, um, you know, like I said, the balsamic on here with the soy sauce and the garlic, um, you know, the feta and the watermelon and the mint and red pepper. And then we have the prosciutto with the basil. So just a lot of really great taste combinations. You might want to um, make these just one at a time or, or just try them one at a time because uh, you really want to like even sometimes next to my recipes in my recipe book, I, I after I um, commit to a recipe that I like and it actually makes my book, I have a large binder and I put them in sheet protectors. Then what I like to do too is I make little notes. Um, you know, if it's 
if I'm cooking a large piece of meat and I'm doing it outside on my spit, I write things down like the weather and whether it was windy. Uh, these kind of things, sometimes I like, wow, this goes really well with red meat. This goes really mel met well with brown rice. Uh, this goes well with this, just to make some notes for yourself on some flavor combinations that you like is, is a really great idea. So um, just make some, make some notes, have fun with it. You know, you're trying to, maybe you're, maybe you're not, maybe you're trying to build like a, a nice recipe book or something that you could hand down to somebody like a, like some type of legacy. It's good to have all these notes in the side. Uh, one of the best gifts I have um, is one of my grandparents' cookbooks where my grandfather had all kinds of notes in the side, um, whether it was an adjustment that he made or whether it tasted good with a certain other food. Um, it's just really nice to see um, what other people have done. So let's set this aside and look at our finished product. And when this comes out, what we did with our mushrooms is we also put some parsley on them. So here's the, the finish. Let me just put them on the plate. This looks really good all together. So here's our mushrooms and you see we've got some nice grill marks. And whenever that came out of the, whenever that came off the grill, that also got a little, um, some parsley there. So just really fantastic flavor combinations here um, between the cauliflower and, and things that could really stand on their own um, as far as, um, as, as far as like a main dish to that cauliflower could definitely be a main dish. These, these mushrooms can, that it could also be an appetizer as well. Um, just depends on how, how you're gonna serve them. And then we see our ice is starting to melt because we left it out, which is fine. But uh, that looks really nice too. So you see that, and it's nice too, you know, you could serve this in a nice chilled dish and let's get our watermelon feta salad over here. So a lot of fun things today, right? So remember that um, you could, it's, it's always good to use fresh. Um, that, you know, in some of the, some of the things that we have going on here with the watermelon is the lycopene, which is great for decreasing muscle weakness, prostate and eye health. It also helps with insulin sensitivity and low, lower blood pressure. So that's, I mean, a lot of, I always try to pick out something that, yes, it's in season, but is it healthy for us? That's why for a minute there, I'm thinking maybe I shouldn't do prosciutto, but I was able to find some that had no nitrates and no nitrites. And that's becoming more popular with many um, products like that, that are similar to that, that you could get them now with no nitrates or no nitrates. Um, so we have our watermelon salad, and then we have our iced watermelon um, you know, so we have a really great contrast of flavors, you know, to make for a really nice um, entertaining um, and these kind of things too. Like if you always have that guest that comes early, if you have your um, honeydew cut in cubes and you have your prosciutto ready to go, um, you know, they could, that could be the guest that puts those together and assembles them and, and have some of those things. Always when you're having um, a dinner party or something, if you have something, um, because you're always going to get that person or two that shows up a little bit early and they, um, you know, willing to give a hand. If you have something like if you have baguette and you could have them slice the baguette, um, something that you, um, you know, because some of these things, really require your attention. You know, maybe you want to do the watermelon feta salad because you want it arranged a certain way or that you're working on something else that really needs your, you wouldn't want to have them grilling meat or, or finishing something like that or cooking a piece of fish. But if it's just a matter of, um, if you have your mise en place ready, you have all your, your melon cut, you have your prosciutto cut the way you want it and your glaze is done and your basil's ready to go, you could just, um, somebody could just sit there or a couple people could sit there and do those, arrange them on a plate. That's, that's something, you know, that guests could do when they feel like they've done something. So, um, and again, those, the chimichurri that we made at our last class, that would be great on the cauliflower. Um, you could even go heavier. You know, you could think of some of the other things that you might want to put on your steak or maybe a butter with um, rosemary and garlic in it. I like to do that a lot. Uh, you know, fresh rosemary and fresh garlic, 
mix it up with some softened butter, stick it in the refrigerator or even freezer before you're ready. Whenever that cauliflower comes out, you could just cut like a little slice of it, small slice, because uh, you know we are trying to keep it low and sad. We're trying to keep these low and saturated fat, but um, that would be a nice addition. You know, um, you could serve it on focaccia for a vegetable sandwich. You could serve it alone on top of brown rice, quinoa, couscous, anything like that would be really good. Or on top of a salad, you know, uh, it's it's great to try some carb balanced meals that you know traditionally we might have had over pasta or rice. What we can now have over salad. Look at all the the different protein salads, and I've even seen some recipes lately with meatballs on top of a salad and shaved um, Parmesan. So those are some different ways that you could get some carbohydrate balance into your meal planning. So um, again, all the recipes on my website. If you have any questions about the nutritional content, that's on there as well. There'll be some step-by-step -step, um, about technique. Um, the big takeaway I hope today, I hope, is safety. And you know, making a flat, it sounds so silly, but I, I've seen people you know, try to cut a cucumber or a potato in slices and it's rolling around or a green pepper. Always, always, always make yourself a flat edge first. It's not gonna roll, it's not gonna move. You don't wanna, uh, you know, makes it hard to make a dinner when you have a, a cut that might be bleeding or something like that. So always get yourself a flat edge, um, you know, Again, remember how we cut our melons to get two flat edges, take off the rind, let the rind be your guide. Choose a, nice, a knife that you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with a French knife, use something that maybe you are, maybe a paring knife works for you. Uh, maybe the smaller French knife that I had would be more ideal for you, anything like that. Um, you know, as long as you're comfortable, uh, you want to use a good sharp knife and um, follow the rind, discard it because we don't want to waste. Uh, there's just too much. Uh, everything's too expensive. So we want to make sure that we're getting um, everything. And then these, I will take out all these rinds and everything today when we're finished and compost them. So that's going to be my soil for next year. So um, remember, it's always good to think about how to after we use things what what are we going to do with them next what goes where do they go next so i don't like to just throw things away i like to always keep thinking about how another way that they could be used um and, and that's what chefs are good at too even in the kitchen you know what's another use for this how can else can i use um an ingredient that i have or how can i use this leftover so um you know that keeps costs down for sure so i hope you try these um you know this this is, I'm going to try this as soon as we get off of our call because it looks so delicious and refreshing. Um, and just a little sprig of mint. And I just used the very top of, remember when we were cutting our mint and our basil, you just want to cut down to that joint so your, um, so your plant stays nice and healthy and bushy and serves you fresh herbs all year long. Great to be with you today. Again, Laura Zervis, registered dietitian, licensed nutritionist, and trying to keep you on the path to wellness. Have a great day. Thank you.